Hello, this is the new Korg Op Odyssey. Now the Op Odysseys came out in the 70s, uh, three different versions I believe. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how the thing works or, or whatever. I, all I can suggest is have a look at uh, Retro Sound on YouTube and he does some really useful comparisons between an original Op Odyssey and the Korg Op Odyssey. And they sound pretty damn close. What my job is, is to just open it up and have a look inside there and see how this thing works. Because Korg apparently have made this all analogue and uh, it's 86% of the original size. The keys are small but they're not mini, they're sort of slim keys. So it's perfectly playable. Uh, and I'm just wondering... You know, in the days when resistors used to be this size, these are the ones found in the original Op Odyssey, and this I'm guessing is all going to be surface mount gear. But uh, other than the MIDI and the USB MIDI in and out, there's not really much electronic wise extra going off in here, but it'll be interesting to see. Oh, apart from this drive that uh, Korg added. But uh, I'm going to open it up, have a look inside there and see how a modern day analog synthesizer is made. So as you can see on the back it looks like the original except it's got a headphone socket here and it's got a USB and a MIDI input. The USB isn't audio it's only uh, MIDI in and out and I'm not quite sure if it sends the data of the slidey buttons or anything. Not too sure about that. But uh, it's got all the CV, gates, trigger, in and out, etc. And uh, yeah, and a little volume control for your headphones as well. But it's, it's not heavy, it's nice. Comes in a beautiful case. So let's get it open. Here we go. Wow. Okay, it doesn't look anything like the original. But uh, one big main board there. And these are a few tiny boards for the CV and gate and triggers and ins and outs. So I'm going to try and lift this board up. And we can have a look on the other side because that's where all the components are going to live. So, uh, right, let's get all the switches off the other side. As this has got different coloured faders, you'll want to put them back together in the right order. So, just take a few pictures, and that way you can't put the wrong colours on. Now to get these faders up, you just finger and thumb and lift up. There you go, all cleared, no buttons. You've got to remove all those tabs or else you can't get this lid off. Well the first board off is the, <laughs> the lead free board, yeah I just read that. The uh, power CPU board. So this has got uh, components on it so small I can't even see them. But other than that, yeah, it's, there's your power, this is your MIDI, and this is your USB. So this is a USB driver, and that's for your MIDI signals in and out to your PC. And uh, yeah, not a great deal on there that I can see because they're so tiny. You have to remove the CV gate and trigger jacks because there's a screw on the big board here hiding underneath the CV jack port. So you've got to get these off to get that last screw out there. So they're just basically 3.5mm jacks. So that's your trigger. And this is your CV gate. Oh, and the volume control for the headphones as well is on that board. And last but not least, CV in and out. 
So yeah, just basically jack boards. Right, now I can get to this screw and remove this panel. There's no need to remove the portamento foot switch or pedal or the low output. Uh, I should be able to work my way past that. So I'll get this bit unscrewed now. Right, it's free. Okay, let's get this out and have a look. Uh, that's actually upside down. One moment. There we go. Okay, you'll have to excuse my hand wobbling here, but I'm doing this freestyle just to try and give you a look at the actual board. There's the high pass filters, there's the uh, VCOs. Uh, what have we got there? A good old fashioned 4011 chip there. That's a two input NAND gate. Uh, let me go along a bit more. There's another VCO too. And then moving over here, there's the LFO. I'm not sure what that chip is up there. Yeah, I'm sure you can get the numbers. Sorry, the chips are upside down, aren't they? Never mind. And uh, VCF 1 and 2. Now, this is the filter type 1, 2, and 3. So let's have a look at that chip. That's a 4052. That's a four channel multiplexer. It selects one or four channels to be turned on and connect analog inputs to the outputs type of thing. I'm guessing. And that one there is a 13700. That's like a standard op amp, but it's sort of two current controlled operational transconductant amplifiers. So it's voltage in and current out rather than voltage in and voltage out. That's that one I'm pointing at. I'm trying to hold the camera steady at the same time. And uh, there's the VCAs. Yep, very nice. Okay, and let's move down. Your ADSR circuitry is all here. Uh, sorry about the unprofessionalism of this video, but there you go. I just wanted you to give a to give you a look around the board. There's the sample and hold circuit. Just there. Audio mixing. And then over here, we've got your portamentos. This strange little button here can only be accessed with a pen through a tiny hole. And uh, these are those pressure switches. They look like tiny little balls, tiny little metal balls sticking up. Uh, pressure sensitive switches of some kind. The other side of the rubber switches have a sort of a, a, a metal weight in them. This is the other side of those pressure sensitive switches and there seems to be a small block of metal inside them. So I'm not sure how these actually work but I know they take quite a bit of pressure to activate them. Now I have not got the original plans of the ARP Odyssey. I mean, I'm sure they're online somewhere, but uh, there's no programmable chips in here. There's none of the sort of Roland ACB circuit behavior going off here at all. This is all analog gear. It's just a lot smaller. It's all surface mount components instead of through hole components. So yeah, my hat's off to Korg. This is this is an analog board, 100%. So within this whole keyboard, the only bit of digital circuitry that exists is that one chip down there, and that controls the USB MIDI in and out to your computer. Other than that, everything's analog. Now there's a lot of chat on the forums about the, the size of the keys, and it's possibly putting some people off. So just for comparison, there's a full-size keyboard and there's the Korg keyboard. Now these are not the tiny keys that you find on the uh, micro Korg. 
These are called sling keys. The reason being, you can get your fingers between the black notes and press the whites. It's not a massive issue, but for the sake of six centimeters, two and three quarters of an inch, they could have put a full-size keyboard in. Okay, these are longer by three centimeters, but six centimeters and, you know, you could have had a full-size keyboard. However, it's not as bad as the keys on one of these. I mean, this is a great little synth, but I'm afraid the keyboard on here was a complete afterthought, uh, a waste of time. I've been thinking about just cutting this off altogether and moving this up into this corner and turning it into a desk module, but I'm sure Roland's going to beat me to that anyway, make a desk module. So there you have it, that's the Korg Odyssey. What you see is what you get, and uh, it sounds, as far as I'm concerned, just as good as the original Odyssey. So, uh, time to put this back together again now. That's the Korg Arp Odyssey, and uh, there's no major issue with the keys really, it's perfectly playable. And the most important thing is, it does sound really, really well. So uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up, because it does help with the video searches. And uh, I'll put this on the shelf now, and get ready for the next video. So thanks very much for watching, all the best.